Hello everybody, uh, welcome to this video. We have John here. Hello, good to see you. Um, as you know from Forensic Detailing Channel and we have come all the way down to Hastings in Kent to uh, come and visit Row Point Instruments. What do these guys do, John? They are world leaders in Gonio Photometer, Gloss, um, Brick, all this stuff that we're gonna to explain to you in this video, but a very specialized company, a very interesting company. So stay tuned to find out exactly what they do. Brilliant, shall we go inside? Let's do it. Happy days. Hello everyone and welcome to Rowpoint. And we've been joined here by Tony, and you are the managing director of Rowpoint Instruments, yeah. That's right. Instruments. yeah. And uh, Rowpoint, it's rather an interesting day this, uh, Rowpoint create gloss meters. Yeah, uh, gloss meters and sort of a related, related surface appearance measurement instruments, yes. Crikey. Um, <laughs> so what I wanted to do was talk about gloss, because obviously from a car detailing point of view, gloss is gloss, and it's, it's kind of the be all and end all for many. Um, so let's start at the very basics. What is gloss? Okay, so gloss is um, uh, determined by the specular reflectance of the surface. When a light is shining on the surface, simply how much is reflected off of the surface over a defined angle. So it's the shininess, brightness, luster of the surface. And it's, what's it measured in? So um, there's a, uh, a measurement called the gloss unit, mm -hmm. which is related to some international standards, which uh, are published by in America and, and the rest of the world. And uh, yeah, the gloss unit is defined by a relationship to a known physical standard, which is held in some laboratories in Europe and, and the USA. So is that an SI unit? It's not an SI unit, it's a kind of a, a comparative unit. So it's comparing it to the um, reflectance of a piece of glass with a known properties. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's it. everything relates back to that. All gloss meter manufacturers and everyone relates back to these, these physical standards. So that's how everyone measures the same. So Tony, now that we know gloss is measured in gloss meters, uh, in gloss units, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, is there such a thing as 100% gloss or uh, what's the scale of it? This is a kind of a slight misunderstanding of the scale. So uh, a gloss unit, um, the, the normal term is 0 to 100 mm -hmm. gloss units. That's the normal scale for painted surfaces. Um, and that's related to this piece of glass. That is 100 gloss units and that's defined as that. But it's not actually a percentage, it's a, it is the gloss unit. 100% reflectance, if we imagine a mirror where absolutely all of the glosses, all of the light is reflected, that's actually a lot higher than 100 gloss units. Um, is that theoretical? Can that, that, that actually is? happen? So if you were measuring, uh, perhaps on a car you were measuring a chrome part, mm -hmm. um, if it was a perfect mirror, it would measure 1,000 gloss units at 60, 2,000 at um, 20 degrees, these are the different angles for measuring glass, and uh, around 200 for, uh, for 85. So there is theoretically higher gloss than 100%, which is what the industry uses. And zero gloss is a perfectly matte surface. Zero is no reflection. Doesn't it's quite simple. So it just, just disappears somewhere else. Yeah, so that's exactly gotcha. right. Yeah. So in terms of automotive applications, yeah. um, what would be a typical range in, in gloss units of a, say, you know, bad paint that is, is dull and, and, and Yeah, matted? wow. So if you've got something really horrible, some really oxidised red um, <laughs> Chevette from 1986. It's going to be 60, 50 gloss units. Mm -hmm. What we're hoping to achieve uh, a really nice, uh, freshly coated top coat is around in the 90s. I would say mm -hmm. is a good target to be looking at. Yeah. And one thing we have in the past used gloss meters, uh, usually admittedly quite sort of cheap, basic ones. Yeah. And in fact, you've, we work with uh, John Delu, who's here as well of the uh, Forensic Detailing Channel. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he's got one of your instruments and yeah. has recently been putting out a lot more uh, videos using that higher grade uh, equipment. Yeah. And he was saying the difficulty really comes when you're in the higher gloss measurements. Yeah. It's the precision, or should we say the resolution yeah. of monitoring. Now, uh, you mentioned that 1360 degrees. 2060. 2060. Yeah. 2060. Yeah. Um, could you explain what the difference is and what that actually means? It, so, measurement resolution is. Uh, the difference between uh, the actual numbers for a visible difference. So if there's a big vis visible difference but a small difference in the numbers, mm -hmm. that's not very good, that's a low measurement resolution. But if we're getting a good spread of the numbers and very small differences, that kind of tallies with our eyes and that's a good measurement resolution. So for gloss, when we're measuring high gloss, if we use the 20 degree angle for, the, for the anything above 70 gloss units, mm -hmm. Imperceptible differences will have a, a difference in the numbers, 
Uh, whereas if you use 60, it's, it's much more compact and less resolution. So the guidance from the standards, which we discussed earlier, is that anything over 70 gloss units use a 20 degree gloss meter for those, for those measurements. And when you say 20 degree, yeah. literally you've, you've got a piece of equipment such yeah. as this, place it on, and it has a, I'm guessing, a sender and a receiver unit. Yeah, exactly. Basically. It's almost if you imagine you had a torch and you were shining it on your car, and then you have a bucket to collect the amount of light, the angle, this angle from, from normal, which is the straight up, is 20 degrees, mm -hmm. and the receiver is also 20 degrees. So that's source and receiver, the light and the, 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 the diode to collect the light, and then 60 is further around, but 60 okay, degrees. So it's more perpendicular at yeah, 20. Yeah, I guess, yeah. yeah. That's right, so it's closer to the, to the straight up and down. Yeah. And you're saying it, it fires a, 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 a beam, is that light or laser, what it's on the spectrum? Yeah, so it's a, it's a white light, so we generate that light from LED, mm -hmm. um, and it's collimated, which means it's like straight, a straight beam of light. So exactly. if you have a really good torch and the, the, the spot is the same size when it hits the wall a long distance away, that's collimated, so a straight beam of light. And you do that with lenses and focusing, or is it exactly. polarised? So it's lenses, no polarisation, just a, a collimating lens. Right. Straight, it keeps the light straight. It reflects off the surface and it's collected by another lens mm -hmm. and then um, focused onto a sensor. So if it's just a standard gloss menu, it's a diode which just gives us a number for how much gloss is reflected. Mm -hmm. And if you're on our more up-to-date kit with, a, with the IQ, it's looking at how that light's reflected. So I'm well. guessing that sensor's bigger, it's kind of probably similar to a CMOS sensor in it. It's very, it's very similar to a CMOS sensor, but it's just a single line in the camera. It's an array of sensors rather than just a single, uh, single diode. Gotcha. Yes. And, the, and the power of the light, is it like sort of a one watt LED or is it much brighter? Right, it's, it's, it's less bright than that. It's a, it's a kind of a, Quarter watt, I think, something like that. So it's, it's, it's not it's not particularly bright, but the sensitivity of the electronics are enough to capture even a very small reflection from the surface. Much uh, much more accurate, correct, capturing that uh, reflection in your eyes up, definitely. So um, by the sounds of it, the tech is really in the sensor and the interpretation of the data coming out of the sensor, rather than the actual LED light, which is sort of fairly generic. Yeah, you have to, we have to filter it. So again, in the standards, they took uh, you have to have a certain um, color of light mm -hmm. which comes out of the LED. So we have to change the color of the light to match the standard, but. It's just no, it's and that, that's in Kelvin. I guess that's a K rating on the lights. I guess it's actually um, there's a uh, committee called the CIE which determines light. It's actually the spectral response, so how much green and red and blue is in the light source, and it's CIE C in the gloss meters, which is a, uh, a spectral response of uh, the amount of light that's in there. Gotcha. Gotcha. So essentially, we're, we're getting an idea on how gloss is measured, what gloss is. Yep. Um, now I think it's time to crack open the toy box. Uh, you guys have been at this for 25 years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I think this, this, this company was established in 86, it's perhaps even a bit longer than that. So yeah, the gloss meters have been leaving the Hastings area for, <laughs> for quite a while now, so yes. And in terms of your market, I mean, it's really nice to see actually, yeah. um, you know, uh, cutting edge technology yeah. from the UK. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm not even aware of many in the way of competition in the UK. Are you pretty much the sole provider? Yeah, yeah, there's only uh, really uh, three or four credible gloss meters manufacturers worldwide um, who, who manufacture kit which is re uh, repeatable and reliable and you know high, high end kit. Wow. Yeah. And in terms of your customers, yeah. uh, we talked a little bit before before we started filming about uh, potential OEM connections and stuff you've got on the vehicle side, yeah. which sounds very exciting. We'll talk yeah. about that if we're allowed to talk sure, about that. Sure. Um, but in terms, you know, you, you haven't been relying on car manufacturers and well, detailers no, no, for, for building your lovely factory. Yeah. Um, what, what's the most common application of your tool? Well, you, it's, it's really easy to imagine. Anyone, so we're measuring the reflective appearance of a surface, and it's been psychologically shown that the reflective appearance, how, how, how much the light is reflected and the way it's reflected, is it as important as the colour when we're judging, when a consumer is judging uh, if they like the product. So if you think of all the products that have a shiny surface, they all buy gloss meters. So it's consumer electronics, uh, furniture, polished floors. Super yachts, car industry, everyone who's interested in producing a reliably similar high quality surface they're measuring with gloss meters or, or value product. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, a lot of what you mentioned there are products. So there are things where you'd have a big factory and yeah. they come through, and then as they're going out, they get checked to make yeah. sure they meet standards. Yeah. Um, in a detailing environment, it's about it's the aftermarket. improvement yeah, yeah, it's sure. and it's a service. Yeah. Um, are there any other comparable in terms of clients who use it as a uh, almost as a service or certainly to, to um, I don't know, to assess work on a Yeah, definitely. Object. So we've, got, uh, we've, um, we've done a lot of work in, in the USA on the concrete polishing market. So there's, there's a big thing in the USA for 
large lobbies and, and nice buildings that they lay a concrete floor and they polish it to a very high standard. Mm -hmm. So it's very flat and... Uh, so it's like very polished large. marble but with concrete. Yeah, uh, and the more you polish it, the flatter it gets. So, you know, we, we're talking about the, the, the distinguishing image on the surface, the, the amount of bumps, they, they measure that in the moment. So it's, that's a pretty similar market, I would say, to them. And is that what you call clarity? Or? Yeah, so that's that's exactly right. So the um, the instrument which we market for is is uh, a derivative of our IQ, and we call it the concrete clarity meter. And that's that's exactly the term. Yeah. So we've covered about how your gloss meters are used in other industries, yeah. um, but for detailers, what information can your equipment give them uh, beyond just simple gloss meter readings? Okay, so we're, we're kind of unique in the market. We have a, a gloss meter plus product which measures more of the more information about the surface. So we talked about the bucket and the light reflected on. That's a nice simple means to say how much light's reflected. But for markets like um, detailing and other, other places who are interested in a really higher specification of what's going on, we have an instrument which measures other things. Now these aren't things which are new. The, the original um, paper which describes the things that the IQ measured was written in 1937. So this is written by Hunter. But it's taken this long for the technology to catch up to make it affordable and available to markets like detailing. So um, the additional things which we measure um, is, let's think about that spot of light on the, on the surface. If we're measuring with a gloss meter, we're, we're measuring how much light's reflected from the flare of a reflected spot, for instance, and a little bit of an area around it. So that's kind of what the gloss meter does. What we do with our um, uh, IQ going over photometry is we measure how the light's reflected and we can calculate some more indices. So what we also measure is the haze, which is how milky or um, how what kind of top surface is on the on the um, on the coating. We also measure the distinctive image. So if we've reflected that spot, how crisp and how uh, how well reflected it was the clarity of that image. So these these are the additional measurements and also the the R spec, which we'll talk about later, is the actual how bright is the very brightest point on the, on the reflected image. So these additional measurements tell us, you know, if we just know how much gloss it is, it's not telling us if there's a haze on the coating, if there's a, a horrible orange peel on the surface, or um, if it's a, a really bright and sharp, sharp, sharp so reflection. So you can almost create an overall score that's based on more than simple reflected light and, and gloss. Um, the interesting thing sort of thinking about it myself, is if you're a detailer and you've, you've, you've used the unit and you've got your readings, yeah. um, it's almost mapping what an issue is and yeah. how to solve that exactly. issue. Because detailers, yeah. for example, orange peel, you know, they'll have a procedure yeah, against exactly. orange peel. But I, I've been intrigued to know whether, or with might be something we can actually test this, is yeah. to see what procedures help with haze, for example. Yeah, definitely. Um, and these are, these are well-known things in the, in the industry, in the, in the, the painting and automotive industry, that the haze can be caused by um, poor curing conditions in the OEM. It can be also caused by atmospheric, so the haze appears with weathering. Mm -hmm. You know, all of these things are well-known. And a lot of the cures are about polishing or removing the top surface of the, of the coating and going back to a fresh... So whatever, whatever the problem is, just, just polish it. Just polish it, polish, <laughs> yeah. polish it down. I think, I think a lot of us could get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have some lovely tools here, some of which look wonderfully retro. I'm yeah. hoping that's not your latest and greatest. So this is, no, this is, this is where we started. We talked about 1986. This is just a, a standard gloss meter. So back, back in the day, the technology, instead of being an LED, was a bulb. So mm -hmm. it was just a, a filament bulb. We shine a light on and we grab it with a diode. So this is where we started. But we um, we had some feedback from our customers that this isn't enough information. You know, we want some more detail on and the who, haze. And who were the early adopters of this sort of thing? This technology has been in the market since the 40s. Right. So people have been measuring gloss. I'm sure the Model T Ford was measured with some kind of gloss meter done by uh, <laughs> Bon Boy Hunter in the, in the 30s. It, it, it's a well-known technology. There are tens of thousands of gloss mixers in the, in the world in, in, in different industries. Mm -hmm. But we took the steps in the, uh, in the 90s to add these extra, extra measurements. Um, and we worked closely with a number of institutions and we became uh, closely tied with the National Physical Laboratory in, in Teddington. And one of the scientists there recommended he'd seen an instrument which had been on the market measuring going after to like going over photometer, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately it failed and didn't work out because again the technology wasn't quite ready. It was a, 
a big block uh, like this, but they patented it, they had a good concept, so we licensed that patent, and this is the predecessor of the IQ. So this is... It's much curvier, isn't this it? This is much curvier. And it's laser-based? No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, got, it's got the laser... That oh, yeah, yeah that's... Simple. I think there was some marketing <laughs> there at the time. But it's, again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a filament bulb mm -hmm. and the reflections from the surface, but it's much lower resolution, resolution than our current um, instrument, and it was really expensive. Mm -hmm. So because technology at that time was expensive to do the electronics and then the LEDs were more expensive, um, we got some really good feedback from it, so we sold tens of these instruments, mm -hmm. but we sold them to really, really, really high-end applications. So what, in, back in the day, bearing in mind, obviously, currency yeah. changes all this like £7,000. And then but the this, is in, this is in the yeah. late 90s, I guess, is it? So it is probably £8,000, £10,000 nowadays. But we got some really good pull-through. It was yeah. over from uh, some super yacht manufacturers and some coating manufacturers and a couple of automotive, but they all said it's a bit big, and a bit expensive, so we took a quite a brave step in the in the 2000s. Let's make this, let's democratise this, let's mm -hmm. make it smaller, uh, less less costly. So, is the cost in the components, or is it in the R and D behind the components? Both, both. both. and you know, it's how quick you want to recover your R and D spend. So, mm -hmm. we we envision selling tens of these. You have to recover that R and D over, us, you know, a, a larger amount per unit. But it's what we did in the uh, 2000s was to come out with the IQ, uh, which we did in uh, 2004 or five. So we, we re-engineered it to make it smaller. This is the actual unit, which uh, people have been using in detailing, but to make it affordable. So the price equivalent of this is very similar to a, a normal gloss meter. You know, it's in the same uh, price bracket, which is three or four times the amount. So we've had a much better pull through since we've, uh, we've introduced this, and there's, there's thousands of these in the market. Yeah. And, and how many do you reckon in the detailing environment? Or, I mean, car prep is different. But it's hard for us to say. We sell through a number of uh, um, resellers worldwide, so we, we sell through a lot of market. But I would say it's in the, in the, the tens now, rather than the hundreds. I think it would be how we'd estimate it. Okay. Yeah. And is that still available, or has it all been? So, yeah, so, so this is the unit, this is the IQ unit, that is, that which is, yeah, the current version we've been using. And and yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you're a detailer and you want to get yourself one of these, what's the sort of damage area? It's uh, around 2,000 to 3,000 pounds, around 2,700 3,000 pounds, then if you have two or, or three angles. So. so as a detailer, obviously that's quite a serious investment, um, and I'm trying to think of other investments of a similar sort of ilk, and maybe if you're getting into PPF and stuff like that, some of the, the, the plotters and kit that's involved with that can get up easily to that sort of level. Um, also, if you have a sort of uh, Del Fesco style uh, paint detector, ultrasonic paint detector, that, that can get into kind of 1,500 territory, yeah, so it's still going to be for, for its size, the most expensive object. Definitely. But then commercially, uh, and we were discussing this earlier in fact, is, is that how it can be applied commercially, because on the one hand you could offer it as a service, as an assessment service, yeah. um, but alternatively it could also be a bit of a USP, and you know, you get lots of detailers saying, oh I'm the best detailer in the world, or the best in this part of England, and you sit there and think, well, you know, who am I to doubt it, but if I was a customer, I'd be sitting there thinking, well, yeah, you're going to say that though, aren't you? Whereas if you have at least some way of metering things, yeah. and being able to show, look, this is the difference I've, I've done, yeah. and I'm just thinking out loud, I do quite a few concourse competitions, as well, and if, you're people, if you've got apparently perfect paint, yeah. um, then you could use something That's like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's definitely a, a case for it, yeah. um, but it takes perhaps a slightly different way of doing the business and actually yeah, being definitely. much more accountable and saying, look, this is what I have done for you, this is this is the improvement I've done. Yeah. Um, so that's very cool. And you've got an even bigger one there yeah. as well. So uh, I guess uh, what we thought we'd talk about is what's the future for this appearance measurement? Yeah. So we're in uh, the difference between uh, the instrument with just measures gloss and the IQ is a, uh, a gloss means just a diode that measures the, the, the amount of light reflected. Yeah. We've got a lot, uh, an array of sensors which detect how the light spreads over from the, from the reflection, which allows us to calculate the haze and the R spec and the um, distinguishing image. The next level and, and the things which are coming are to move um, as the technology is, is available, becoming available now, is to move to cameras. Mm -hmm. So we instead of just We've gone from a, a one sensor to a line of sensors. Now we can start to be two D analysis instead yeah. of the surface. So uh, our next generation of products uses cameras, and we've been developing a, a new 
um, a new system uh, with, with, with a Volkswagen group of companies, and that's that's kind of hot news, and that's coming to the market mm -hmm. for the very, very near future. And that's from the point of view of their production facilities, checking quality control as the vehicles go out. Exactly. So to, to make sure the paint quality is to the, the, the standard they require and harmonious. So maybe a panel's painted, uh, a bumper's painted by an OEM, and uh, the rest is painted in the factory. Do they? Do they tie to gas? So this is the kind of work in which we're involved in. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed with these, these are what I call spot meterings. So you have a small area that you're yeah. checking and on, a, on a panel, just as you would paint depth, so you would take multiple readings all over the panel of the area. Yeah. Uh, with this camera one, does that have a larger field of view or is it still... So, so the, the handheld version is a small field of view. We have some robotized uh, equivalents which start to get bigger into the 50mm the, the, um, uh, mil by 50 mil okay. area, so, yeah. so a bigger chunk. Um, but it's all about the resolution of the camera to capture the very fine things which change in a uh, that affects reflective appearance. You need to have a really high resolution image of the surface. If you're far away or you've got, a, you know, you yeah. can get a big surface, you can you can perhaps see bumps and defects, but you can't see the detail. micron micro level. Uh, it, well, it's like back in the day when you had the old rear projection TVs. You could buy a TV 85 inch TV, <laughs> yeah, massive, great thing, exactly. but the resolution was running 1024. So yeah, if you're watching it from the garden, <laughs> you're cracked. But um, yeah, if you get up close, it's it's yeah. so better. So yeah. no, I can absolutely understand how that works. Um, and so sorry, this this big chunky one here. Yeah. What's that? And so this is this is that this is the the handheld version of the um, uh, the TAMS, which is the Total Appearance Measurement System. This is taking the IQ to uh, another level and absolutely specialised for automotive, not um, automotive, automotive uh, cars and finish. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing because obviously the technology is smaller, it's more expensive. That's a, a bargain in comparison to. Yeah, that's this is a, this is a very expensive piece of kit. <laughs> the other thing which we're working on uh, is. Uh, when we're building a car, there's several layers which go into uh, uh, the final appearance. So we have the substrate, the steel, and the aluminium. Then we have the uh, the eco, the um, fillers. Then we have the base coat, and then we have the clear coat. This instrument can actually measure at all the levels. So it, sort of before they've been before they've put. Yeah. So we can measure the eco, we measure the steel, then we measure the eco, then we measure all those things. So that's that's again helping us to understand. At the OEM level, how the, how the final appearance is and, up. and on the factory floor, that is giving them, if, if the readings are not up to the minimum standards required, then it would go back into the factory to get re prepared. Right, I guess, I guess. So, this is it's about improving the quality and saying if we have this value here, what happens at the end? You know, and improving the different steps in the, in the manufacturing process. Yes. So, the future so far, the immediate future now is obviously using cameras by yeah. the sounds of it and creating yeah. full images. Does that create a nice picture of a visual representation or is it still yeah, the so, data? So, we're actually mapping the surface with this tool, so you actually get a, a map of the orange cream and you can see the bumps and you can see the difference. It's very interesting. Really cool. It reminds me of um, Time Team. Remember Time Team? And, and oh, yeah, the physics thing. Yeah, the physics. Yeah, yeah. 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 a really small for Yeah, take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the immediate future. What do you see the, the long-term future? Yeah, well, the, there'll definitely be. So we sit also um, with a number of other manufacturers and OEMs and we sit in some development uh, committees to develop the next generation of instrumentation, and what does the what does the uh, the market or the, the technology requirements are, and the whole requirements is to get closer to human perception to to allow us to quantify the feeling of quality. So there's a lot of stuff in the in the in the pipeline, but it's probably several years away before any of that next generation becomes becomes available. Yeah. Well, it's certainly very very niche, but I can see you can kind of going very deep yeah. into that particular niche, yeah. and I can see there's lots of applications for that. And from a detailed point yeah. of view, it potentially helps to go to the next level in terms of quality of service. I'm sure these things will trickle down into the market. You know, the, the, all of the stuff that was done by Hunter in the face was almost around automotive, and it it comes out into the the sub markets of automotive and the rest of the manufacturing industry. Eventually, it's just, it's just the way it works. You know, they're kind of the leaders. That's brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what, what I'd like to do next, if that's yeah. okay with you, is to actually take some readings and yeah. to see how the machine works and how yeah, to yeah, sure. interpret the readings. Yeah, sure. So what we're going to do is, is potentially go and find something that we can take a glossometer yeah, on, sure. um, probably my receding hairline or something like that, yeah. and then we can figure out what, what the different, um, what the data is from that and then interpolate that, that, that data to, to see whether yeah. we can improve things. Good idea, yeah. So uh, if you join us in a minute, we should be ready to do that. Fantastic. So we have reconvened, having got some clever bits of kit out and some test panels. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted Tony to run through the process yeah. of how one gets the machine out, calibrate the machine, yeah. super important, and then take some readings and, and then kind of interpret those readings. Okay. Um, so you've got here the IQ. Yeah. I've also got the calibration plate. Um, so this is the instrument. Uh, 
We're going to use this as our IQ. You can see in here there's a, the glass plate. This is very similar to the one that's held in the in laboratories we talked about before. So we simply place the instrument on it, switch it on would be a good idea as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it automatically detects it's in position. So it's saying there's a tile on there, do you want me to calibrate? So it's really a good idea to calibrate once a day if you're using this, this kit. Um, and also it'll actually detect if the um, calibration artifacts dirty or any fingerprints, it's good to have a quick look at it and then have a polish before yeah. you do it as well. Out of interest, what, what's the cleaning regime for that piece of glass? Is there any particular chemicals you used on it? No, no, so we sell it with an optical cleaning pot. Just please don't dunk it in anything horrible or get it too dirty because <laughs> it's, it's not so easy to recover, but optical cleaning pot, anything you'd use to clean your glasses. Mm -hmm. So anything, you want that to be a perfect smear-free And you do it dry, do you, or do you add a... Add a I do it dry, but if, you, if you've accidentally got something on it, yeah. like your, your lunch or something, then mm -hmm. maybe some... Uh, Glass polish, glass clean, or something like that would work perfectly well. All those instructions are in the manuals. Brilliant. Anyway, so That's nice little color screen as well. I've noticed. Yeah. So they're, they're, this is the, the screen of the instrument. Um, and I've got some panels, uh, which are automotive panels. Mm -hmm. I, might, I might just grab one if that's all right. Yeah, sure. Are they all the same? Or are they different? No, no. So these 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 got two sets, and there's differences between them. So these represent three different qualities of uh, automotive finish. This is really horrible, this is uh, medium horrible, and this is okay. I, I was about to say, this reminds me of the orange peel on the boot of my Subaru. But, uh, <laughs> at the same time, um, what colour do you describe this? I rather it's kind of brownie orange, and yeah. I like it. Man. You like it? I like it. It reminds okay, me of, of the that. 70s, which makes me feel young. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's got some orange peel on, quite yeah. a lot of it, and then these are getting better and better, aren't they? Yeah. So the nine has got orange peel, so we talked about the gloss mixture, we looked about the reflection. These also, these also have a hazy surface, so if mm. you look at this again, you can see, especially if we... Um, Shot, shot a bright light on it, you don't see a deep reflection, mm -hmm. you see this second surface, which is this, this, this ha hazy top surface on these, these panels. So I think we're going to measure those. We've also got some super quality uh, panels here, which are really nice. They're actually pretty unachievable in the automotive process. Mm -hmm. These have a little Challenge bit, accepted, but yeah. A little yeah. bit, yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you guys can try that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so these have a... Just a little bit of haze on, on two of them and, and not much on the other on the okay, third one. Can I have a look, look at this? So this is the nice one, this is the really, the really special one. So this is one you think no detail can possibly achieve. Oh, I, 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 there you go, the challenge is out there. It is pretty good, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. That is that's um, from what I can tell, I mean, you've got some scratches and stuff yeah, there on yeah. what we call RDS, but um, no, I can see that in terms of the reflective properties, it looks yeah. like a black mirror. Yeah, so it's basically. very flat and uh, with very low, low haze. Yeah. The only way we can really determine if there's the low haze is to measure it. And we'll look at, compare these visually, and you really have to look hard to see the differences in these surfaces. Yeah, actually, I'll give that one back to you. And so is that that's automotive paint still? These are all like automotive paints, yeah. standard automotive, uh, the same process we discussed, uh, e-coats, filler and uh, base coats, and then uh, uh, lacquer. Uh, lacquer on the top, like a clear coat. So it switches back on, so it's also going to auto switch off, save some batteries. So this is the horrible one. And this is taking, so it does all the measurements, it'll take the different ones at different angles? Yeah, so simultaneously it's going to measure the 20, 60, 85 gloss. Okay. So uh, if you remember we talked about the most important gloss for uh, the high gloss levels, the high, the 20, 20 degree and the 60. So they're really the two we should look at. It's also going to give us our distinctive image, which is how accurately a reflected image is represented in the surface. This is a measure really of the orange peel. The haze, which is how hazy the surface is, and the aspect, which is the brightness of that very small highlight on the surface. So let's have a look at this one. So you can see we've got a uh, Gloss of 84, gloss of 60. So it's a pretty glossy surface, to be honest. You can see that when you look at it, it's a, it's a highly reflective. So, sorry, if we, we start, we've got 84 at 20 degrees. Yeah. And then, interestingly, at 60 goes up and at 85 it goes up, which yeah. is your point about resolution. Yeah, so exactly. If we're going at 85 degrees, for example, which is the lowest it's resolution. It looks, looks as close to uh, the, the glass standards as yeah, it can be. Yeah, as concerned, yeah. it's perfect. But yeah. then as soon as you get into the more, the higher resolution area, the 20 degrees, it shows it's 84, which is still not bad. Yeah. Uh, what's the DOI stand? So the distinctive image, so if it's 100, it's a perfect perfect mirror, so the re image is completely reflected. This is all kind of orange peely and bumpy, mm -hmm. so it's a 60, 61 DOI, so that's saying it's orange peel. And the log haze C is how much haze there is on this surface, so we're seeing there's a chunk of haze. There's, there's a, a haze. And what's, what's the scale of that, 47.2, what's that mean? So um, that's a unit uh, assigned in the standard, really 
in automotive or on a really horrible, horrible, very hazy surface, it's going to be at 200 or something like that. So it's oh, so lower the better. Lower the, the better. So we've got zero. It's it's a nerf. Yeah. So yeah, so that's yeah. not perfect. But that's it's not, not perfect. But it has some. Not but the real perfect. thing is uh, the real um, area drop in the quality is with that orange pill on it, which I'm yes. sure you agree. And does one impact the other? So if something's got lots of orange pill, will that affect the haze element, or would that affect? Not so much that way around, but the other way around. If there's a lot of haze, yeah, it can drop the sting of, of image, but not necessarily the other the other way. Okay, so that's a. Uh, Let's try the second one. This is our medium quality stuff. Yeah. And does it, it memorise that? I can see a, yeah. a, a mini USB. Yes. There. So uh, if we switch the memory on, if we don't switch the memory on, you can just measure and it's just a quick uh, mm -hmm. snapshot. If we switch the memory on, um, it'll remember the values and we can also average. Mm -hmm. So if we take four on there, we can look at, this is going to be a bit nonsense because there's loads of random. You can see the minimum, <laughs> maximum, mean standard deviation of those yes. results. And, uh, um, the same for the DOI and log haze and aspect. And also there's a nice little graph as well, so you can see the variation across the car or the panel that you're measuring. Which is, and equally you could do before and after, so that could show the improvement. I think that's really important. And, yeah. and it's got some nice um, tools to create reports. So, uh, the most uh, as in desktop, as in computer software yeah. tools. Yeah. So you can, it's actually got a Bluetooth function, so you can have an Excel uh, spreadsheet open on your laptop, and the readings as you read them are well, dropped into the dropped into the spreadsheet, so you're actually creating the report as you go along. Or alternatively, you can plug in the USB and pull out all of the mm. same data as well. So did we measure that one? I can't remember. We well. did. We did. Um, so we can see uh, the gloss is pretty similar. So 83 mm. on here, 84, so the gloss is pretty similar. A bit better on the, on the 85, but... Again. Yeah, again, that's, that's, yeah. that's just the, 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 the repeatability. The distinctness of image is better. So we said it was uh, 100 was perfect. This was 70, and we're now at 77. And also the haze has dropped a bit. So we've gone 46 haze to 25 haze, and from distinctness of image 69, which is low, up to 77. So your machine is essentially saying that this panel is not as nice as that panel. Yeah. Now I'm going to use something called the human eye. It's been around for a while. Yeah, my mark is brilliant, it has to be said. Yeah. And again, the chances of the camera picking this up I'm guessing a fairly minimal. Yeah. And the chances of my eyes picking it up. Yeah, I can't. I, I couldn't say for sure that this panel is worse or better than that one. Okay. That is, with your eyes, and that's, with the, the eyes, that's yeah. exactly. But we're not in ideal light conditions here. True. So if you're on the street and there's a nice straight line reflected on the surface, you would definitely see that. So this is taking out the subjectivity and the environmental conditions for assessing that. Which is really handy because detail, yeah. really, you know, detail is run in units on the whole. They've got LED, fluorescent and all sorts of other yeah. halide lighting systems. Yeah. Um, and quite often you get all sorts of problems. So for example, you get people who do their car outside yeah. and then it goes inside, it looks terrible yeah. and vice versa. And those who are just using LED lights or just using a certain yeah. sort and you get it into a showground, the NEC is a perfect example, they have big halides, yeah. a car that looks pretty good outside goes in there and it looks so terrible. It's horrible, horrible hazy effect, so yeah. has, has, you can start to see the, uh, the, the distortion of the reflected images. So yeah. this is a, a way of taking out that subjectivity and environmental conditions. So we're going pretty poor, and you can't see those differences there, but no, I, am basically, in, I, I hit three people driving here. <laughs> That's I was only aiming for one of them. <laughs> So yeah, so that, there's, there's, there's a significant difference there, and now we're into the, the best panel. Uh, that auto power off is, is, is uh, effective. Yeah, <laughs> I think we've got a short, set of it short, so you can actually, of course everything's customizable, you can turn it off, oh, have it for minutes or whatever. And what batteries is it? I'm guessing little lithium batteries, or is that? So it's rechargeable, mm -hmm. and it does the most huge amount of readings between charge, I think it does 20 odd thousand readings, it'll, it'll last for, for weeks really. It's been enough for a panel. Yeah. Definitely enough for, for <laughs> even the biggest car. So, um, Right, so let's measure this one. So what I love about this piece of kit is how simple it is. The buttons, I was literally just pressing the big button in the middle and it takes a reading. It seems very intuitive given how clever it is on the inside, on the outside, even somebody as stupid as me could potentially use it. So we can see that we're getting close to a really nice panel now. So the gloss again is the same. So this is the point about a gloss mm. meter. We're using a gloss meter, it will say these panels are identical and there's no way these panels are the same. <laughs> A real difference in quality. If you detail them, it's a public custom pack this, I think. <laughs> when they do a riot, it's more than a phone call. Yes, exactly. So you can see, gloss exactly, more or less the same. Um, but the distinctness of image, we said 100 is uh, close to a mirror, we're 96 now, so we're getting to a much flatter surface. 
Our log haze is down at five. Yeah. So that's almost gone. So it's almost has no haze, a very flat surface. This is becoming a nice, mm. a nice panel now. So this is the this is the measure that you can before and after and then give to your customer. But what's really interesting is this. I can certainly from this angle, I can still see some orange of oil. This is definitely definitely better. But yes, it's a kind of the the ripples of the orange peel are less defined. So yeah. it, it's certainly smoother. It's it's like a kind of a calmer ocean if you like. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what's interesting is it's already so close to the top of the scale, I mean, yeah. 4.5 from the best, so it's at, at kind of 4.5% when 0% is the best, although it's not a percentage. Yeah. Um, and the gloss, yeah, that, so at the 85 angle it's saying it's 100%, so it's the same gloss as you can possibly get yeah. at that low resolution, but at higher resolution it's 84.3 yeah. gloss meters. Um, so I'm really looking forward to see what those black ones do. Okay, good. So those, that's a nice um, sort of quick demonstration showing three different quality, it's really nice. So these black panels, are they essentially just all that much better, so you go from... These are all really, really good, high quality, but they've just got a really subtle difference between them, really, really subtle, but I mean... But I can see some orange peel on this, or some... It's barely orange peel. Yeah, so this is like a really, really fine haziness. Mm. It's so small, the, the texture, we define this as a, as a haze-reducing um, structure rather than a... Um, a DOI reducing. So the DOI at least is, is, is all going to be good, but we're going to perhaps see a haze difference. Yeah, so let's have a look. And actually, being able to describe paint defects and paint attributes yeah. um, is really useful from a detailer's point of view. You know, when, when a client or somebody says oh, the paint is just not quite there, it's just not quite pinging, yeah. the detailer is immediately going to be thinking, okay, so what scale are we talking about here? What is the uh, issues that need to be resolved? Mm. Um, and this one, interesting. So the gloss is slightly lower than here, mm -hmm. which again, which says, is gloss the most interesting measure? Because if it's flat and glossy, it doesn't really matter. Those, mm -hmm. those five extra units don't matter. It's more about the flatness and the low age of the surface. The gloss is slightly lower than these panels, are 85, 81 to 85. But you can see the distinctive image on this low, on the, 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 the worst panel around these three is 96. So it's equivalent mm -hmm. to the really good one. The log haze Can is 13, it? so it's slightly worse than the best one, mm -hmm. but has a, has a slight amount of, of, of haze on that surface. And the R spec, how is the R spec relevant in this circumstance? So R, R spec is the brightness of that peak, and we should see that improve on these as well. So that's and the, you want a higher or low R spec? Higher the better. So the, the closer it is to the gloss value, that means there's a real uh, sharp sure. and bright, and bright okay. image there. So let's measure this one. So we see the gloss has jumped a bit, the R specs jumped a lot from uh, we're getting a nice sharp reflection. Yeah. So the DOI is heading towards 97, it's really becoming flat, and the haze is, is going lower again, so we've got 15 to 6. We're getting better and better. And, and this, this is gonna be this is your, your master. This is this is unachievable even by the greatest detailer challenge. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we've got uh, the gloss is similar. So, well, actually, gloss, I hate to break it to you, gloss gone down because the yeah. other one's 83. But it's perfectly, it's almost perfectly flat. Mm -hmm. The distinctive image is 98, so a bit, very little orange peel, and the haze is almost quite existent on there. And is there such a panel that hits 100 on gloss at 20 degrees? And So, it's, it's, that's not really, so the, the gloss is related to the refractive index of the coating. So, depending on the chemical makeup of the, of the coating, it'll only reach a certain Certain a certain gloss. So well, it's quite handy to say that because I know there will be some detailers out there and some enthusiasts out there as well who will um, try, you know, maybe get the equipment on a whim or something like that, an yeah. expensive whim, and uh, just constantly trying to hit the best. Yeah. But the answer is that it's not yeah, attainable, yeah, it's, it's yeah, to do yeah. with the chemical makeup of the paint. Which yeah, definitely. Right. So what you're really looking for is the gloss to be as high as it can, but really these other these other measures are almost more important than the gloss hating behavior breaks so on. So we started today saying that we know as detailers that gloss is one of the most important things in our lives. And the answer is it's not. It's it's R spec and it's um, DOI and haze. DOI and haze. So yeah. that's something we have learned today, along with many <laughs> other things. Yep. Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're going to take a little wander around your factory um, and take some B-roll for the various bits of film that we've done to illustrate what we're talking about. But in the meantime, I know you've got to fly off <laughs> in more ways than one. Yep. Um, that's an in-joke. <laughs> um, and uh, you've got a very interesting client who we've been chatting about, which um, yeah. I'll just give you a clue. Um, <laughs> and uh, to use your new new equipment with. So um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Cheers.